Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today I have a great video on Microsoft Excel. I'm going to discuss the interest rate versus APR, but I'm going to show what is the break-even point for APR. Because sometimes when you purchase a home, one APR may be higher than the other APR if you have multiple lenders or possibly even the same lender. But there are cases where you want to take the higher APR. So let's go ahead and look at that. I have in this video, so if you want to jump to a specific section, because I'm going to do the payment function, I'm going to figure out uh, the annual percentage rate, I'm going to do some calculations with mixed references for the different number of years, and then I'm going to do a break even for APR. So if you want to jump around in the video, I have put timestamps down in the YouTube description. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm keeping this simple. I'm looking at two lenders. The loan is $300,000 for the house. 4.5% um, interest rate for one loan, 4.25 for the other, but it was initially 4.5 also. There's something called discount points that you can buy. Usually, one discount point will bring your interest rate down 0.25%. So that's why I went from 4.5 to 4.25. And one discount point is equal to 1%. So I've got to pay 1% of 300000 is $3,000 to bring that interest rate down. We should also possibly bring down the APR. So let's go see this. So no matter what, the loan is going to cost me $3,000. So to figure out what the one, the one discount point is, I'm going to take the $3,000. And I'm just going to simply take the number 1, divide it by 100, and multiply it times the loan. That should give me $3,000 plus the other $3,000 should give me $6,000. And it does. So that is one discount point you can buy depending on your lender they may offer you to get one point two points possibly more so it's not always they don't always offer this but something to look at also just so you know this and to be clear it's not always 0.25 percent decrease it all depends on the lender but it usually is so now here's the payment function uh, what is my interest rate? B2. I'm going to make it monthly. Divided by 12, comma. How many periods am I paying? This is going to be a 30-year loan. 30 times 12 is 360, comma. What is the amount of money that I'm borrowing? This will give me a negative number, but it's G1. And I'm going to absolute reference that because it's going to be G1 for the 4.25 also. That's my point. It'll give me a negative number. I just want to show it as a positive to keep this easy. So I'm going to make it negative G1 in the formula bar right there. I should be able to autofill that over. So obviously the lower interest rate brings in the lower monthly payment. I have already calculated the annual percentage rate which is almost always higher than the interest rate. So this is almost like the true cost of getting this loan. Just to test this 4.42, just to show you this, I pulled up an APR calculator. I put in the exact same numbers I have here. There is your 4.42, monthly payment 1475.82, 1475.82. So there you go. So my numbers are correct. So now, now I'm covering the point about sometimes the higher interest rate and even the higher APR is the way to go. So let me show you when that's the case. I'm going to look at this year loan for three years, four years, five. Then I'm just making this up 10 years out, 20 and 30. This is just going to be one easy formula, and then I'll just autofill it. So, three years, 
times 12, 12 months in a year. I know I'm going to end up going across and down with this, so I'm going to use a mixed reference here. Dollar sign A8 times 12. That will give me 36 months times how much money am I paying every month. That's my monthly payment. I'm going to make that one a mixed reference, the B5, F4 once, F4 twice. I'm freezing the row, not the column. So the dollar sign is before the number five. Plus, I want to know what's the total cost of three years. I had to pay that $3,000, which is cell B4. Again, I'm going to use a mixed reference B dollar sign four. I'm using the F4 key. If you want to type the dollar sign yourself, feel free to. So let's see what I get here. 55,007, I'm sorry, 57,722. So that is 1520. I'm just going to test it real quick here. 1520.06 times 36 months plus that $3,000. I just want to make sure this is right. We are in business 57,722. I should be able to pull this over to the right. So there is three years at this interest rate in that APR. Lower payment, obviously. Got them both highlighted. Let's auto fill it down. Real quick test to see if this one's right for 30 years. 30 years is 360 months times that payment. 531, 531, 295, plus the 6,000, 531 and 6,000 is 537. My whole point about this is even though loan two, which had a 4.25% interest rate and a lower APR of 4.42, in the short run, it's more expensive because of the upfront cost. So always be careful with APR. It's great to look at if you know you're going to be in the home for at least the full amount of the loan or the term, the 30 years, or if you have a 15-year loan, 15 years. But if you're not going to be in that home the entire time, this is a great spreadsheet to calculate why you may take a higher interest rate and a higher APR over a lower one. Thank you for your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos on loan amortization, uh, interest rates. I uh, also look at APY, which is different than APR. Have a great day. Thank you. Hey, so I forgot to show the break even. So here's your break even point. Um, if I take a look at the payment, I've got the higher payment minus the lower payment. So I save 44.24 month when I make my payment. But to get that 44.24, I had to pay an additional $3,000, which is up in row number four. So I'm just going to simply take $3,000 and I'm going to divide by the money I'm saving on the payment, the 44.24. Uh, that is in months, so 67.82 months, which is five years and almost eight months. So if you're going to be in this home for under five years and eight months, you're probably better off just taking the 4.5 is what this data is saying. If you're going to be in the home over five years and eight months, then you should take the 4.42 APR, the lower interest rate. And I actually have five years here. Let me just change this to six and see if that's true. Yes, it's true for sure at six years. At five years, you're better off with the 4.5. So there you go. Thank you. Bye.